All right. Don't know if there's anyone there to hear me or if you can hear me. Okay, cool. I do not usually do stuff on cam, and the lighting is horrible down here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Trying to see my tank back. I was hoping somebody would come out so that there would be something to actually look at, but everyone's kind of hunkered down right now. <laughs> I had one little guy that was kind of hanging up in the uh, forest side in the corner there, and... Uh, of course, now that I'm actually on cam, he decided to go hide in the moss pit. So. Everybody's camera shy, <laughs> including me. <laughs> yeah, move so I can show a little bit more of it. Oh, let's see. Sorry, hopefully I won't give anybody motion sickness here. Here's the forest side. And the saltwater side with my rock wall and everything, which is very difficult to see, especially thanks to the UVB light, but <laughs> Uh, yes, it is a um, 125 gallon tank and for the base tank. And then I have two Exoterra tanks on top that are let's see, 18 by 18 and 36 inches wide. So they fit just perfectly on top of the base tank. I've been hoping to see if the crabs would play on the hoops, but so far I haven't been able to catch anybody on them yet, so I'd like to get a picture or something of it at some point, but, and I've been trying to catch somebody on the wheel, um, and I can tell the climbing on it because they've ripped the, um, coconut fiber mat that I have on it. They've ripped that all over the place, um. But I haven't actually seen them rocking on it yet. I'm assuming they're doing it probably at night while I'm upstairs. Um, uh, what parts of the tank do I notice most activity with? Um, so far, it's been kind of hard to notice at all because I just moved in December and got this tank set up in January. And then I... Uh, ended up having to redo it all again because the one of the uh, pools cracked and drained five gallons of water <laughs> into the substrate. And so I had to completely do the substrate again. And uh, yeah, that was not fun. And um, so the crabs have just been messed with here and there and everywhere. So everyone's still been pretty... Uh, hidden and haven't been doing a whole lot yet. Um, I have noticed they seem to like hiding on the forest side a little bit more so far. Um, I have a couple, there's a uh, coconut hut over in the corner that I always find at least one or two crabs um, sitting on top of it. So um, I do not have a store yet. Um, I bought the hoops from bird toy supply websites that I mentioned um, at the end of my talk. And that would probably be the best suggestion ever to uh, get them. And they have tons of other natural items and stuff that you can buy to add into your tank. So they are a really useful resource, I think. Uh, one second, I can grab one of them. Let's see. This was the main one. It's probably a little easier for most people to buy from if you're not going to. The other one you had to buy in bulk, if I remember correctly. Um, 
hoping it wasn't this one. Uh, maybe it was this one. Um, oh, I know what the other one was, my safe bird store. So there is the other website. That first one, Bird Toy Builder, you do have to buy in bulk. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, if you don't want to end up with 50 of the little seed pods or 50 vine balls, um, maybe try looking on My Safe Bird Store instead, the second one. And that's a good idea, Dan. I'll have to try threading some popcorn. I I keep meaning to make popcorn for my crabs, and I never remember to. So I'll have to try giving them some treats to get them to check those out. I um, put the coconut fiber mat on the wheel with uh, silicone jean. So I don't know how well it's going to stick long term, but... And yes, definitely check out the vendors for um, CrabCon as well, because they sell a lot of cool stuff. And there's definitely a lot of things in there that would be great enrichment. Sorry, trying to catch up. <laughs> um, let's see. Yes, you can mix bark pieces into the moss pit. Um, I have a couple different that I have set up now of um, moss pits and then another one where I did uh, bark, mo um, the moss from Gian, um leaves and stuff like that for a couple different options. Yes, I cannot wait to try the cubes, Dan. I'm really excited about those. <laughs> I've been eyeing them since I noticed you posting them in the group. And those are perfect. And let me see if I can get a better picture of the lights and how I have them set up. I have to turn the UVB one off. Oh, don't know if I will be able to show this off very well. Um, sorry. <laughs> Let me see if my phone flashlight can help here. Um, all right. Let's see. So you can kind of see the light strip up there. That is my UVB light strip um, on my beach side. And I have it siliconed um to the top of that topper and i have the uh, forest side is silicone to the back probably can't see unless i turn the light off sorry i hope i'm not making anybody motion sick oh, hi guys I know, mom's being annoying. I have a couple of crabs hiding right there. <laughs> They're not too pleased with me right now. Uh, let's see. Um, I don't know if that shows it very well, but there's my other strip. Um which is an under cabinet LED strip for the forest side. Um, let me close these back up. I know, I'm sorry, Grabbies. I know. <laughs> I literally have one crab that is right next to the light switch and not happy about getting messed with. I was really excited to do the forest and beach side. <laughs> it was fun to figure out what I wanted to do for kind of different environments. And I still can't believe that the rock wall 
actually worked out honestly i thought it was going to be too heavy and uh i'm really relieved it worked because i was going to be a mess if it did not stay uh cleaning fortune items um so most sellers are going to mention um sarah asked about cleaning foraging items um most of the sellers will mention if they have cleaned them and i think most of them do clean them before they send them out um you can either rinse them off with uh uh treated water um treated with prime or you can freeze it you can boil things um it kind of depends on the item um I know most people tend to uh, either bake or freeze wood, depending on if it's big enough or too big, I mean, to fit into the oven. Um, most people will usually rinse or freeze leaves. Um, you do not want to boil or bake rocks because they can explode. So the um, best thing to do is probably just soak them in hot water carefully and uh, let them dry out. Um, Yes, my backgrounds for both sides are spray foamed. Um, I used uh, flat styrofoam boards and then used uh, spray foam on top of them to build the rest of it. And then um, siliconed coconut fiber to it for the forest side. And there's some um, cork bark pieces and stuff in there too. And then I siliconed um, black lava rock to the background for the beach side. And I also have a Troya log wall that um, that idea came from Dan Comas. Um, and they really like that. I have noticed them climbing on that quite a bit. So. Uh, Colleen, I don't know. Uh, some crabs may just not like climbing as much. It may be something to do if, uh, the items you have available maybe aren't sturdy enough. I don't know um, what you have in your tank or anything, but or if you just got them, they may still be settling in. So it just kind of depends. Um, some of my crabs don't seem to climb this much either. Some of them hardly ever come down. So it may just depend on the individual crab. And um, Erica, I hung items from the top. Um, the uh, thing I mentioned in the talk, um, wall corner guards that you can get from home improvement stores and such, you can drill holes in one side and you silicone the other side to the tank. So I have uh, wall corner guards on the inside um, all the way around. You can kind of see the um, kind of clear opaque strip right there. That is silicone on the back of the uh, corner guard. So, and then I have one that's actually at the very top of the uh, forest side. Um, I don't know if it's, it's very visible, but that's where the um, hoops and stuff are all hanging from, is that corner guard that I put in the top middle. Um, and yes, I'm going to be in as a uh, part of the session on foam backgrounds tomorrow too. So if anybody is looking for more information on putting those together, definitely join us tomorrow for that. Um, and uh, yes, I opened the uh, tank from the front. I have a base tank. Um, which is a 125-gallon uh, regular fish tank. And then at the upper part are uh, two toppers that are exoterra tanks. So um, they are actually made for reptiles. And I took the top off. It's a uh, just a screen top. And you can take that off, flip them upside down, and they open from the front. So that's how I can get into my tank still. I really, I really like using those for toppers. That's worked really well. Uh, 
Oh, it was Mike. I'm sorry. Yes, it was Mike Fukoder that I got the idea from for the Troya wall. I have a horrible memory. <laughs> um, and yes, Sarah, if you want to make sure, um, there was also a talk yesterday. If you um, want to ask more questions, look for Jan uh, Singas. I think I'm saying it right. Um, she is the owner of Because of Crabs, Moss and Such. And um, she did a really good talk on foraging yesterday. And uh, if you want to ask her questions, um, you may mostly want to look for, uh, make sure that you know what the plants are and that they're safe. And you want to check for pesticides and um, make sure that the area is treated at all. But uh, yes, if you freeze or bake things, that should eliminate the, um, mostly eliminate the risk of introducing any bugs in the tanks. So, catching up on catch up on comments a little bit. Yes, I was looking at the tension rods. I almost bought one, but they don't. They wouldn't fit. Well, they might fit in my tank with the backgrounds, but. I decided against it since I wanted to get a couple other things. Uh, thank you for linking the corner guard, Stacy. And Jean, thank you. <laughs> Jeannie. Yes, and definitely check CSJ's foraging guide when you go out. That'll help a lot. But I'm so disappointed. I, I watched her foraging talk, and I really want to do some foraging for my crabs, and I'm in the middle of a freaking city, so <laughs> I don't really have a lot of options. But I am planning, now that we have a house, um, I'm hoping to plant the whole yard up with crab save stuff um probably starting next year at this point but i have big plans <laughs> especially flowers it, it can be so hard like all the places that sell dry flowers sell all the same ones and it's pretty much only ones that people use for their own food or for soap and stuff like that so i really want to get some more um crab safe flowers because I'd like to expand what I have. Mm -hmm. Maybe they decided to move. Wish it wasn't so hard to see into the tank, but the way the lighting is set up. Oh, and I think somebody asked um, back a while, I don't remember who, somebody asked about uh, any difference with um, my UVB light, and I have not noticed uh, a huge difference for that yet. Like I said, everyone's still kind of been settling in with how hectic the last six months have been for them. Um, but I did uh, come down, what was it? Like last week I came down and found a couple of crabs just hanging out on the Troya wall and uh, far enough up to where the um, they would be exposed to the UVB light. So I don't know if that necessarily had any impact on their decision to sit there or if they were basking or um, at the very least they didn't seem to be avoiding it. So that made me happy. Um, I was a little worried that they wouldn't like it, but um, at least so far those two don't seem to mind it. Um, recipes for breads and cookies. I know uh, CSJ has some food recipes, which include uh, some cookies and stuff. So um, you can definitely look there. For bird breads, um, I don't know if like specific places really. Um, I know uh, Parrot Nation is one of the blogs that I first got a lot of ideas from. Let me find a link for that. Um, there's a blog by a woman named Patricia who likes making lots of different interesting foods for her parrots. And um, yes, Crab Street Journal, sorry. Link as well. Let's 
So they have some recipes if you search on there or Stacy might be able to find it. I don't know. Um, they have some recipes for some different mixes and cookies and stuff. And then if you check Parrot Nation, they have some like just kind of loose recipes and suggestions for um, how to do grain bakes, uh, possibly bird bread. I'm not sure. Um, that kind of thing. Um, Foods for sprinkling, um, for foraging, so chia seeds are a good one. You could also, um, pretty much any of the vegetables that uh, are safe, you can um, likely plant the sprouts in. You can get sprout mixes. Um, I really like another website I use a lot is Mountain Rose Herbs and... Um, they sell some different dried plants and stuff like that. They also sell sprouting seeds. Um, so I actually have a whole bunch. I don't know where I have them. Ha! They're there. So I have a bunch of sprouting seeds that, again, I still haven't used yet. I need to give it a try, but, um... I have red clover. This is probably this is backwards anyway, but alfalfa, broccoli, and wheatgrass. And wheatgrass is the same stuff you can get. Um, it's sold as cat grass. Um, so you can also buy like a cat grass planting kit. And it's almost always wheatgrass as far as I know. So um, that's an option. Um, for your planting seed gardens, um, I mean, it's kind of down to personal preference. You can use terracotta. Um, I, I saw C. Dan commented peanut butter lids. Um, I've also seen people use um, eggshells and just put worm castings in those and sprinkle some chia seeds, which is a great idea whole thing is edible. It's perfect for hermit crabs because they think everything is supposed to be edible. <laughs> uh, for foraging items, that again, um, that's kind of down to personal preference, Rochelle. Uh, I have a foraging tray that I like to put a lot of my mixes in. Um, it just it gives the crab something else to climb. It makes it so that I can see them a little better than they're digging around. Um, and it helps me kind of see what they're eating first out of it, too. Um, I don't usually like to have a lot of leaves and stuff down on my substrate just because I don't want them to get too buried. Um, I get a little bit nervous about stuff um, getting moldy if it gets buried too far. So I try to usually keep um, leaf pits, moss pits, stuff like that up in containers to avoid that. Uh, let's see. Trying to make sure I haven't missed anything. Uh, good, oh, good plants for a crabby garden. That one I do not know. Um, great off the uh, top of my head. Um, but definitely check the safe food bus. Um, for a lot of the groups, and I know um, the Land Hermit Crab Owner Society has um, a really good safe food list and foraging list, so um, check those out, and they have good flowers and herbs and stuff that you can offer, um, so those would be good options to try planting. Um Oh, thank you for the other uh, seed source, Robin. Um, my crab's raven enrichment item is um, probably the coconut huts, actually. That's just, 
they're always jammed into them. They'll try and get five or six of them all crammed into the same coconut hut. Um, other than that, uh, oh, I had a, um, oh, the picture that had four crabs sitting in a row on a log. That was a Mopani log, and they thought it was amazing. I pretty much always had a crab on or around that log. And I've actually been thinking I should try and get it back into the tank because they liked it so much. Um, and they also really like uh, cork bark. Um, they love to eat it. They like to hide in it. It's great texture. So. Um, yes, nuts are great too. Uh, I have a nut mix and that is a really popular food item for a lot of my crabs. Um, so that would be a great thing to put. And one of the things I like doing with my foraging dish is um, I like to mix like flowers and leaves and stuff in it. But I also really like to put um, seed mix in there because they have to kind of dig around. Uh, seeds are high fat, high protein. They tend to be pretty high value. And so um, sprinkling the seed mix or dried insects um, or you could do crushed nuts and it uh, gives them something a little higher value and they have to kind of dig around in the mix of um, flowers and leaves to get to the really good stuff. And then once that's done, they'll go for the rest of it too. Yes, that's a good idea, Stacy. Thank you. I I got a um, like special handmade coconut hut for one of my jumbos because he tried so hard forever to get into the coconut hut I had and he even switched shells to something smaller to try and get that through the opening and I felt so bad for him so I got his own special coconut hut and nice bridge and everything he never went near it <laughs> I'm like okay fine I tried I don't know why he didn't like it I don't know if it was the location or if he thought it was too open or what but I never saw him in it. <laughs> and yes, if you do like a little eggshell garden, that's perfect. Just put the whole thing right in there. Like I said, if the whole thing's edible and they will love every part of it. So I really like that idea. Um, which hanging enrichment toy, uh, Rochelle? I'm not sure. The um, Is it the one I showed in the... Uh, talk with the bind ball and the seed pot. Okay. Um, you know, and I took pictures. Um, I can always, I can post the pictures that I took of how to make it um, on the CrabCon group uh, after this. And I took kind of step-by-step -step pictures. And um, so I will post those uh, after I get off cam so that you can see. Um, it's pretty simple. So it should be pretty easy. And then, I mean, like the uh, hoops and stuff. I've got one that's just a single hoop. Um, I have the one over there is four hoops together. Where I just tied them together. Um, I have a enrichment pack that um, I sent to uh, Christy Elrod. She won it uh, of some different other kind of foraging toys and stuff like that that... Um, I want to make them for my tank, too. I made one of them for my tank, but I need to uh, go back and look at my pictures so I can make the rest of them, too. But... I have not tried that, Brooke, but that would be... I would be very interested to see. I think they would probably, especially... Um, if you try hiding something like stinky seafood or anything like that... Um, it's high value and pretty stinky. I'm sure they would be able to figure out uh, lifting the cover off or pushing something in order to get to food. Um, yeah, the kebabs that you can buy for birds, um, they have a bit that screws on. You can uh, unscrew it so that you can put all of the food items on it and then you screw it back on. That keeps the food um in place at least until they eat enough of it to uh loosen it but assuming they would i guess um i do not have a shop i'm hoping uh 
I was actually, I attended the selling um, session yesterday because I'm hoping if I manage to get a whole bunch of crab safe plants and stuff, I am considering opening a shop sometime in the next couple years. But for now, it's not something I can handle. Yes, I am definitely going to be hitting you up, Stacy. I'm going to need some help. I... I try, I've sold, sold a few things here and there, but I've always joked that I would like to open a pet supply store and I would be horrible at it because I like giving stuff away too much. So <laughs> I would just go under really fast. <laughs> I keep telling my partners, I'd, I'd open a store, somebody would come in having spent $200 on all of the crappy hermit crab stuff at a regular pet store, and I would just want to gift them the entire setup for free, because I would feel so bad that they went through that. I always hate it when people get taken in by all of that. Uh, Dan asked a very good question um, about uh, stressing crabs out with uh, changing things up too often. Um, so, uh, that's a really good question. Uh, honestly, I think that's going to come down to individual crabs and, um, how much you're changing. You definitely wouldn't want to change like all of the decor at once. Um, I know, I think, I think it was Stacy maybe mentioned that, um, she moved a ladder or something. And out of the tank and the crabs just kept going back to the same spot for like months afterwards. So uh, I would definitely be careful about uh, changing out any of their favorite things like uh, the coconut huts, um, something that they spend a lot of time on. I would be cautious about um, messing with it too much so that you don't stress them out too badly. But um, one of the things, and I wish I would have expanded on it more, but unfortunately, um, I probably would have ran too long. Uh, so, um, with a lot of other species, um, studies have shown that by, um, changing things up in the environment more and, um, introducing new things and stuff like that, it, uh, can stress the animals actually in a good way, which sounds a little bit counterproductive. It sounds weird, but, um, you know, if you never have anything change around your house, then when something does change, you freak out really badly. Um, the same thing happens with animals and this is a, birds around my mind, but, um, it's really prevalent with birds that if they never get new toys in their cage at all, any new toy is going to be a total monster and it might eat them and they flip out and it takes forever to introduce it to them. If you get them more used to something changing or to getting new toys on a weekly basis or something like that, they they do adjust and they come to expect that, oh, well, this is just something new that I can interact with, something that's going to give me treats and it becomes something, it becomes a good stress that they look forward to instead of, this being a scary monster. And so I think, uh, and like I said, the, all of the, the enrichment studies have been done with all kinds of animals, including invertebrates. And so I, I don't think there was anything specifically for hermit crabs, of course, but um, there, I mean, there's no reason it wouldn't apply to them too, that uh, I definitely wouldn't go changing something every single day, um, especially since a lot of people already change their food up pretty regularly. But um, maybe every couple months, change a couple of things out in the tank or um, even just adding, uh, if you have like one bowl, try a different substrate in it, maybe once a month, um, stuff like that, just little things. You don't need to, you don't need to reinvent the entire tank all the time. But uh, just making little changes here and there can help alter their surroundings. It's, it's going to make it a lot more similar to kind of what wildlife would be for them. Um, and, you know, we don't want to recreate everything about wildlife because that includes predators and lots of bad stresses, too. But there are benefits we can take from that that uh, can have a really good impact on 
their care in captivity. So, sorry, that was kind of a long answer, but uh, let's see. Teeter tatter. Um, oh, yes, Brooke. I I have been really. I had an Instagram set up, but I I need to get better about actually using it. So I will definitely have to check your panel out. Um, thank you, Erica. I'm glad that you've enjoyed this, and and glad that it's been helpful to people. Enrichment is one of my favorite parts of animal care. So I was very excited when Mary said that I could do this. Oh, that's cool, Stacy. The uh, 3D printer. Oh, I don't have an actual store carry. Just it's kind of one of those forever dreams that I would like to do. <laughs> um, Pets are just the best at wrecking their entire enclosure, I swear. <laughs> ah, I see. Yes, I will definitely need good help if I ever get one going. So, um, yeah, I think the only animals I have that rival the crabs with just the sheer cage destruction is probably our rats. Uh, I think I got all of the questions that I could see. Um, does anybody have a rope out? Getting pretty close to the end of the session time. So if anybody has any last minute questions or anything, uh, feel free to ask. Oh, um, so if you, <laughs> yes, um, please don't come to my house. Uh, <laughs> I am not very good with people in person. Uh, <laughs> but um, if you want to find me online, um, I'm in uh, several of the big hermit crab groups, but the one I tend to be most active in would be um, the uh, live from a crab owner society. And I also have a Tumblr blog where, um, I post about my animals and, uh, I share just general animal care information, um, pictures, stuff like that. And here is my Tumblr link. And to look at pictures and stuff specifically of my hermit crabs and everything. Um, let's see. Here is the specific search for the tags for my hermit crab posts. Um, I think it's like on page three or something. I have a post that kind of breaks down um, all of the stuff uh, I have in my tank and how I set it up and everything. Um, like I said, that was about six months ago. And uh, frankly, I haven't posted about them a whole ton since then. So uh, if you go back to your three pages, um, I have pictures of setting that all up and everything. And then uh, I had the chance to try raising uh, Zoria um, Zoe, uh, baby hermit crabs, um, last summer. So, uh, I have lots of pictures and videos and very half asleep posts, <laughs> um, about raising babies from last summer, uh, somewhere in that tag as well. So, um, the hermit crab room, I, it's probably maybe 73, 74 or something down here. Um, Actually, no, it was up higher. So it might be around 76 or something. Um, I don't really keep track of the room temperature. The tank uh, hasn't been staying as warm as I would like just due to the size and the toppers. But uh, it's been at least around 76, 77, I believe, uh, since I blocked the air conditioning vent. Um, 
and I would like to get it up over 80, but I'll have to keep messing with it. Um, I have a space heater that I occasionally kind of see it behind me um, that I put on every once in a while if it needs a boost. Um, I do not have an Instagram. Uh, well, I have an animal one, but like I said, I, I barely use it. So um, uh, I'll have to share it on the group at some point if I actually start using it. Uh, ah, I see. Yeah, so I keep that on every once in a while next to the tank just to help, especially if I see a lot of condensation at the front. Um, I have not noticed. I don't know. I What was it? I was trying to find... Oh, no, I was trying to look for information about crab hearing for my presentation. I couldn't find much. Um, I don't know what they can see in terms of color or if they're more attracted to any kind of colors, so... I went for my favorite color for the curiosity cubes. So, <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Thank you, Stacy. I figured I'll be looking at it too. So, I'm allowed to choose the color. <laughs> so, yes, you kind of see. I mean, the crab room is a mess right now. There is something like 1,500 books all over the floor at the moment. Uh, so I won't show the rest of it too much. But I have um, all kinds of stuff on top there, different dried foods and um, a bunch of uh, seagrass mats and stuff. And kind of see some of my very messy uh, <laughs> pantry. I need to reorganize it. Uh, I got all these really nice jars and stuff that I'm going to be repackaging a lot of food in. So, and I got these stacking ones, which are really nice. I'm excited to use these. So, I I could not find a whole lot, Carol Ann. Um, I, we know they can uh, feel vibrations, so um, I would imagine they can sense uh, some bit of sound from vibrations, but I don't know about actual hearing or what kind, like what the range of vibrations is that they could um, sense. Yeah, that makes sense, Dan. Um, I've not had any problems yet with the seagrass mats molding, but uh, I also kind of have a unique tank in how high up I can put them away from the substrate, so I think that helps. Um, <laughs> Jonathan does sign language. Body language is very important. <laughs> I want to learn sign language. But... Uh, yeah, I haven't had a lot of issues with most of this stuff molding, but my tank is so tall that I can really keep stuff away from the pools and away from the substrate. So both of, the, both of those things would increase your chances of um, items molding. Uh, so you might have to be careful about that. And then um, you can help prevent molding by soaking things in some instant ocean water. The salt uh, can help with prevent molding um, if you do that and then bake them. Um, I didn't really do it with most of my stuff because, like I said, I haven't had much of an issue yet. But uh, that is a good thing to try doing if you are concerned about the possibility of mold. So... Um, that's about all I can think of. So, um, I don't remember what's going on right now. Uh, if anybody wants to head over to the other talk going on, uh, refreshing. Oh, that's right. I want, I really wanted to watch this one on researching and how to find out whether things are safe for your crops. So, that would be perfect. You can research whether foods or plants and stuff are safe for crabby enrichment. Yes, Jonathan needs his own curiosity cube. Special one all for him. 
But yeah, I think I will head off then so I can go check out Courtney's awesome talk and everybody else can too. Uh, thank you all for joining me and I'm really glad that everybody enjoyed the talk and asked lots of really good questions. This is a lot of fun and went way better than I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys later.